Back on Inside Tennessee on this Sunday morning with a Crossville Republican who is also Speaker of the House in the state of Tennessee, Cameron Sexton. Always good to have you in Thank studio. You. Let's talk about how economically the state of Tennessee is doing. It's quite healthy from the numbers. We're still doing well, even with high inflation and concerns of a recession. The first four months of this year that we're in, uh, which we just got data for November, uh, we're about 750 to 800 million dollars in the head. Uh, and, and so if that keeps trending, it's going to be about one and a half billion dollars again. Budget surplus, uh, sales tax is up 13 percent, gas is up 5 percent, F&E taxes are up 30 percent. The only thing down is the privileged access because we keep cutting it. Mm -hmm. And what's your revenue growth projection for next year? Uh, we're going to keep doing conservative estimates. I mean, that's that's kind of what we've been doing. Uh -huh. And, and uh -huh. you just don't know. It's an unknown thing. You have inflation yes. running with recession indicators. And so, you know, you could flip it overnight and, and have problems. So we're going to be very cautious. Uh, I'm not criticizing. It's a good feature of Tennessee to be yeah. conservative. About that. Well, you would rather um, uh, keep that money in that's and right. then have it come in after the fact that's and right. use it for one-time expenditures. We used it for TCATs, higher education, here with UT and Oak Ridge National Labs, partner hiring more scientists. So we've been able to do a lot of things infrastructure-wise with the money. I want to talk about infrastructure. I know you have some questions on that. Let's pause for a moment because I want to talk about DCS. That is something that is top of mind in this community. Yes. Judge Tim Irwin says he feels like the system is in crisis. He's a juvenile court judge saying that we're seeing children in the care of foster, uh, excuse me, of the state sleeping right. in DCS offices, unacceptable, I'm sure to you. Oh, absolutely. You know, we, we have a, a, a shortage of staff. We have a pay scale that doesn't match the private sector, which is really not what government needs to do. We got to pay more. But also there was a decision that was made three or four years ago that really has caused this from what I've understood talking to DCS offices around the state is three or four years ago, a commissioner made a decision that the locals can no longer place those kids. Everything had to be placed out of Nashville. So when they centralized placement, that caused the backlog. They didn't have the relationships. They don't allow the locals to do it at all. And that really started what we have. Uh, is there a fix you think that can happen by the legislature or is this an administrative executive fix? I think it's both. I mean, you got to fix the pay inequities. You got to hire more staff. You got to do a lot of things to help get back up. But that decision, we got to put the decision back into the locals and allow them to place those kids with those organizations and associations that they have the relationships with. Yeah, um, back to infrastructure. One, I think there's a $26 billion need mm -hmm. right now with Tennessee's infrastructure. Right. And one of the things you all have been talking about are what express lanes or choice lanes, right. as you call them. I went to Florida. We drove to Florida to the Orange Bowl and was on some of their express lanes. Mm -hmm. And they're really pretty phenomenal. Um, and I know the congestion areas that we have in Tennessee are mainly in the large cities. Right. So how do we how do we fix that? I know a bunch of legislators went out to Texas right. to look at their systems. So talk about that and tell me what the discussion is and and how we how we implement that. It's a discussion that we need to have. We also need to talk about rail access as well. I think it's part of the conversation. Um, but realistically, I came back from uh, South Carolina and I came through Georgia. And at that time, I chose not to take their express lane. Four hours later, I wish I would have taken the express <laughs> yes. lane, right? But the express lanes um, are usually outside or above the roads that are currently. What I will say to everybody who's watching this show this morning is that the roads you currently are driving on will not be affected. None of those roads, nothing you're driving on will be ex affected by an express lane. These will be in addition to those. And what you do is you partner with a company that will These build private it, companies. private companies that will build it and maintain it off the fee that they collect, but the state still owns the property and leases the property to them. In Texas, what you've seen uh, is, is they took members and other people around, and I've been in Austin a few times in Dallas, and they guarantee that in the express lanes you can drive 55 miles an hour and you can get where you need to go and compared to rush hour traffic. Also in the express lanes, you would not have 18 wheelers. Um, yes. So it would be more car friendly, more mass transit friendly. And so it would give you a better thing. And maybe it would cut down on the, on the wrecks and accidents that we're having on the interstates as well. But it's a discussion that we need to have. As you said, we have $26 billion in need. We can't afford to do $26 billion. If we just focus on congestion, then we can't really help rural areas with their roads and, and their bridges. So we got to come up with some solution. And for our viewers who are listening, what, what would be the difference in price so it's free if you want to go from Austin right. to the airport or it's 
going to cost you? What does it cost you for well, that? Well, that would be determined by the, the people who are building the roads and maintaining the roads, and it would be based on how many people are on it. So it'd be, it would be one day it may be cheaper than another day. It's up to them to make that decision. Um, but the thing is, it's, it's their responsibility to maintain and build that. Um, and then we will continue to make sure we can still expand what we currently have. We can continue to do other things to help navigate for people who don't want to choose that. It's just that we don't have enough $26 billion to meet the needs of all of our state. And so it's a discussion that we have to have if we're going to move. You, we were talking earlier about decisions about 840 North and Nashville, how that didn't happen. The orange route here didn't happen. You can go back 20 years ago and talk about that. But we're here today because that didn't happen. Mm -hmm. And so we have to have an honest discussion and see what we can do. We don't want to be Atlanta. We sure don't want to have Atlanta traffic in Tennessee. It would be a great thing for business and all that sort of stuff, but you're going to drive out tourism and other things. Well, we have it in Nashville, and we're, we're right. beginning to see it here. So who right. picks the... Who selects the private companies who build these? Is that a legislative decision? I don't think, I think it would be a, through a bid process, process like normally. I mean, I think the other issue that we have is a road project takes 15 years yeah. to get there. And people all the time is like, this, is, is there fraud in TDOT? No, there's not fraud, there's just inefficiencies. <laughs> because if you think about it, if you're building a road today, in 15 years from now, y'all will probably still be here, Chains. in 15 <laughs> years from now, the whole congestion issue has changed. Mm -hmm. And so we've got to get that to a six year, and I think Commissioner Ely and Governor Lee are prepared to move it from a 15 to a six year window. The more and the quicker we can do it, the more efficient we are, and hopefully we can get ahead of so it. So private companies would be able to do that much more efficiently than a, than a gov state government. Yes, yeah. I would think so. We're going to take another quick break on Inside Tennessee, back with questions from Billy Stair, and we'll have the speaker with some closing thoughts right after this.